new course design menu and as you can see we've gotten rid of all the autogen holes all the terrain is set to zero because I'm going to do that manually as well and the theme we're going to go for is I think countryside now it could be, end up being countryside could end up being delta either will work the main thing that I'm looking for is this kind of change of texture at the bottom so you see with countryside it sort of goes this browner color I need it to dry out a little bit um, what we're going to do first is create our own plot basically so I'm going to go with landscape flatten and going to get everything to zero so let's say around about here here this might look very different to how you normally make plots um, it's a trick from Mayday which I nicked and basically have never done a plot without using this again um, it's fantastic um, what we're going to do is we're going to create our own autogen humps and bumps that therefore when we lay down fairways those are going to stick and we don't have to worry about that awkward auto flattening now the other thing I'm going to do actually I'll do this with flatten for ease is we're going to raise everything up you saw that the water level was quite low we don't want to run into any of that now let me make it 50 odd feet that will work and what we're going to do is just go to flatten and we know that the land's all going to reach the same point so if we go if we go up that 50 foot or so everything's going to come to there and we've done that slightly wrong so I'm raising everything up to that same point by doing flatten and just slowly taking the whole plot so that you can see the edge of the plot we're up a little bit higher now the next thing that I'm going to do is a slightly weird one and I wanted, you might remember this 1000 by 1000 box so the way we're going to do that is we're going to draw out 1000 yards five minutes later and um, we're back with a pretty satisfying little grid that's going to allow me to basically map out all the stuff that I did on paper now as you can see we haven't yet created any holes but what I'll end up doing is going through and this doesn't need to be 100% precise because I still think I can go through and chop and change as we go. We're going to pop in a little clubhouse now if I'm checking my map routing that I did that's basically the fourth or so square down and it's kind of in and around here so we're not going to go super precise but I know I've got a clubhouse area I know roughly where my first tee is I know that my first tee is around about from where I planned it here and we're going across to we're 440 yards I think I planned and it's around about here I believe for that green site so I might not even worry about waypoints too much at the moment now the other thing I'm going to do with this course is we're going to design on full green speeds just bec and we're going to have to take fringe down to nothing because of how I want to do the bunkering so now we're going to get into tweaking things and making it work a little bit better and as you can see from what we've done I'm not quite able to get this angle here which I want looking back over one and the reason being that everything's a little bit too far this way and that's because we haven't used this area as well as we could do so what we're going to do is we're just going to move some holes around again using that move hole feature which is really useful in the way it works so if we move six and then we're able to move five and at this point you start not I wouldn't say deviating from your plan but you're just making it fit within the context of the course that you've got and just making everything fit that little bit better so we're going to do that and then we can pull 13 back this little bit more we get a bit more space for 16 to work with 16 I feel needs more space because we weren't getting close to that sight line with 14 green and actually if we do that maybe we're able to layer 14 this a little bit better so as you can see we're still making little moves here and I'm still trying to keep a gap between T to green where possible but 14 is now going to get a much better look 13 we can move actually 13 can come this way more because I want it to be still close to 14 green and actually I w this hole needs enough space to be able to be really long if it has to be um, I tend to find even a long par 4 you'd think 488 if you think a driver could roll out to 330 pretty easily in firm fast conditions that's still only potentially a wedge in 
So I think maybe this one I plan on being kind of 520-ish. Then that allows me to set up that one. Now, these green sites was one of the things I said I'd put in, in the contest that we needed four greens within 200 yards of each other. So you got one, two, those two are right on top of each other. Those two are too close. So what we'll do again is we'll go back to our move hole. I've got more space with 10 than I anticipated, so we'll move 10 out this way a little bit. And that'll make more sense with that hole. That then gives me a bit more space with 11 to have it going this way. Seven. Seven's still pretty happy with. Walk from 7 to 8 is a little bit, but now we can we've got a bit more space in which to work 17 which is good 17 can go almost I can turn it around and go up this way a bit more and that will free up all that space that we need for 18 so 18 I want the same distance but I want it coming around at more of an angle so that we're going to try to generate that approach shot and you can see from roughly the red lines we're going to be looking back at that cluster of greens on the approach so I'm going to want to try to work away of you playing to the right on 18 and really opening up some of that view. I know that I want 14 to look across the plot, I want 18 to look across the plot, I know this ridge is going to be kind of high and in fact this is going to be a high point as well so I almost think I want this whole area to be high and then everything tails off from that but actually we'll probably have some kind of increase in height around about here or here so I actually want a lower area in this bit. What I want to do is put in the random little brushes first. So what, what I'll tend to do is take this to about five feet in elevation. The land underneath this is not going up to all five feet. Um, it's hard to get under this brush to show. But because it's a fuzzy brush, basically you're not you're never taking the land to the full five feet. What I'm going to do is take this one relatively big, spin it around, and I'm holding apply, basically, so an X, and I'm just going to spin it around. That's going to add some random undulations and we're going to do the same at around let's say three feet eight there's no logic to this what this is doing is just creating odd random rises and falls in the land might make it even bigger and there's no logic to this whatsoever this is all just random for the moment we'll do the logical ones later um, and what that's going to do is just give me some interesting landforms from which to work or like some subtle changes in elevation so you can see here for example we've got a little bit of a fall there not by much granted but it's kind of gently rising now which yeah it's just gonna make it's gonna add a little bit of interest these are never designed to, these ones are not designed to be big moves by the way the second one I'll use is this one. Now shout out with all of this to Mayday. Um, this was originally his technique that I PM'd him before Kayuma about. Um, he'd done a great course that kind of disappeared in TGC. Uh, not it, it never quite made it on tour and I didn't really understand why. Uh, Avondale American, it's his step course and it had some really bold undulations in the fairway that I wanted to try to imitate. So I picked his brain on how he did that. Um, this is basically the result. So with all of these, you'll see these brushes are random, but they're also quite fuzzy. It's really just recreating a bit more of a random plot and just chucking those undulations in. Now for a sandbelt course, relying on ground game and like fun little swales and things, this will be really good. And you can see it's creating some of those there. I generally want this course to be flat, but as you can see, this is going to create your those nice natural green sites. So I can see there's a little dip behind here. Well maybe we use that as a swale but it gives me ideas to play off in a way that a flat plot just wouldn't so I can see really immediately here I'm looking well there's a potential green site by that dip there and it's kind of defined by what well, you could potentially if you look at this this is low you could put a little bunker in there or something you can immediately see there's ideas and things we can work with um, what I might do now is let's get the big moves in now that we've done those bits now if I know that top left is going to be high, the best way to do this and get a gradual slope coming off is to take one of the non-fuzzy brushes or sort of fuzzy. So the epicenter of this brush is going to come up 22 feet and then all the way out to the, the edge it's going to get gradually less. So therefore if I put it off the edge of the map almost, 
that's going to mean that you're creating this nice gentle gradient downhill here which will give us one of those like nice little raking sight lines where everything's going gently downhill and that saves a lot of flattening later on so if we look at this it's generally going smoothly downhill now some of the other moves we've done earlier are also going to come into play with that as well but that's fine um, I might also do something along these lines where we've got a ridge line we wanted so I might just run this across that will work you can also then advanced edit these brushes again if we want a bit of a ridge line with everything falling off it might do something like that and what we're trying to do is create yeah you can see 13's kind of doing that it's hard to see but if we look at this that's relatively flat but the further we go left it's going to fall away a little bit more a lot of this stuff I can I, I can sort out later on but I want to have the big moves in play first I'm going to do the same over here and actually with this one I'm going to try and get the epicenter on here a bit more and the same on here because I think these do need to be higher points and then everything else falls off it now as you can see 14 is not quite working the way we want it to so because of those random brush moves we've made it's going down 11 feet so we're going to need to fix that one because that one's going to be a stunner if we can get it right but at the moment it's not quite there now part of that could just be moving it backwards a little bit hmm. there's a couple of ways in which we can do that or we can just keep working the plot in general so I want to see what change we've got overall so overall 14 feet to here is not big so I'm going to make that a much bigger move we can do more and more and more on this and actually I think we'll go to the other fuzzy brush the main reason for this this one because it's fuzzy I don't mind this one touching the holes as much whereas if it's those that first circular one I used I think I'd rather not have that one touch the plot so what else do we need to do the other option could just be to lower this side we'll just do a couple of moves like that and see what we've got 18th now that 18th green I'm quite happy with because that is definitely higher than this fairway huh. again trick of trick of the land it looks higher and yet it isn't higher than this one okay so this is kind of sitting up a little bit more and then that's going into a valley it's worth just having your measure tool out with I find in this game because you can't quite see the elevation change as well as you maybe could I did want one green to go up towards here so we're going to raise that so that this is higher hmm. but I think I want to start on 14 and try and sort that out and then everything else I think will follow so again this one I think I'm going to raise the green and you can see at the top as well if uh, let's get our marker tool back on here so if we're sitting here you can look at long t height while well, we're right on it green height 14 feet down for this par 3 I don't want to go beyond 20 down but that gives me an idea of like just t to green where's the elevation but the measure tool gives me an idea of whether that's gradual this is really useful for sorting out sight lines nearer the time so that's actually pretty gradual which means that the area we've just raised it was sitting in this big depression which I didn't love still think this whole area could be higher up though what about 17? 17 if we put the 17th green that's 29 feet up from where this green, this T is so maybe we raise this a touch that would benefit 18 as well not hating this now so 16 that should be quite a downhill T shot yeah I think that works I do still think this bit 10 and 16 could be lower and I think that will help me out because that will create a bit more of an avenue of like this sight line and then you start and now we're getting into kind of more minute details I might lower this and that's creating this little bit of a plateau I'm not dealing with this green side yet a site yet but I'm gonna build something up so that I know roughly what I'm working with so if that was 14 done we're then going to look at 15 and think 15's coming up this side of this ridge line. Again, I probably want, I think for the way I want 15 to play, I want this 
right low side on the right to come into play. So I might try and massage that a little bit. And then we're just making general moves and clicking and dragging. But what I'm trying to do is create a little bit of a camber before I even go and put fairway down. You can see we're we're affecting that. On this one then, if we're looking at our landing zone, I want this to be a really awkward tee shot, I think, where you're kind of potentially running out of fairway, but you could really cut the corner. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that, but I've got a few ideas. So I think that works. We'll then look at 10 goes up to there. 11 looks more downhill than I want it to be. But I think again that's kind of a trick of you know, it's this bit of land being a little low and this bit being a little high and this bit being a little low. I wanted this green pop propped up a little bit. I definitely want these ones overlooking that. Because if those are high, then we're going to get that layering effect so that when you're playing your approach shot, you can see each of those. Might even go a bit higher with these. Because actually, I wanted six playing uphill anyway. So why don't we create a hill behind six? Because I think you're, the other thing you're trying to look for, and we'll, come, we'll go back to this in a second, is I think you're trying to make holes have defining features. So, like, what are you going to remember about 12? What aspect of 16 are you going to remember? Like, if you can, in early on in the process, work out what's going to be that defining feature for each hole, I think you're onto a winner and you're making life a lot easier for yourself. Now, I feel like this could be an elevated portion. If I want these two elevated, I might actually go to one of these brushes. So, if you make it big enough, it can, and kind of place it, carefully then these can work quite nicely for giving you some big elevation change yeah didn't like that let's go back to this one this one will work better so you can see I'm trying to place it roughly around those two greens so and then just raise so that the elevation change off those makes a bit more sense yeah don't love this bit here so I'll probably raise all of this. Off the edge of the plot, I'm really just looking for some of the slopes I'm putting in to make sense with everything else. So if we know that this land is needing to come up, well, let's make a big move off the edge of the plot that's going to influence that. kind of feel like I'm close to being there with this. I, want, I had the idea that 2 was going to play up and then down again. So I haven't quite got the down bit here. So I wanted this area to be like low. Big move, but you can see how this is going to work. Mm, not sold on that par 3. So I wonder... Maybe we just have it low there and then this bit's like higher? I don't know. This one, the par 3's on this course, I kind of feel like if I put them in good enough places, they're going to sort themselves. That would work, I think. Four. Yeah, now create a blind fourth. And if you've got a blind shot, always remember you can conquer it in two different ways. So you can both raise the tee and lower the fairway and basically split your elevation. And I think we're pretty much where we want to be with this, at least for the moment. So it's pretty rough and ready, and there'll be lots of tweaking left to go, but you can see the thought process, which is really what I wanted to demonstrate. Now the final thing I didn't talk about in the routing video that I wanted to was that concept that I've just alluded to earlier of let's make sure every hole has character or a signature or something that's going to cause you to remember it. Now I've planned these out, and if you were to pause the previous video on the sketches, you'll, you'll have seen them. And I didn't go into too much detail because I knew I would in future videos. My intentions are, one is going to be this kind of lion's mouth green, so really wide opening fairway. We're going to split, share a fairway between 1 and 10, so it'll be massive. You can hit the ball pretty much anywhere, but in order to get on the right side of that central lion's mouth bunker, so lion's mouth being a green that's, say, like this, but with a bunker here that intrudes into the green. Now, let's call it there. 
because of that you either want to be this side for this pin or this side for a pin here. It basically is wide but also splitting the fairway by what the green's doing rather than a central bunker. So one is going to be a really strategic hole. Two, I think you hit over a rise and then down over this valley. I think the land makes that interesting and you'll remember that approach shot. T shot, we can have some sort of bunker carry or something here. Three will just be a good looking par three, I think. Longish. I'm kind of going to rely on my par threes to look good and carry. They can be strategic, but I, it's hard to put as much strategy into a par three. So, so far we've gone four, five, three on pars, which I think works quite nicely as a start. Um, it's not a combination I've done before, the four, five, three opening, but I like it. Um, four is then going to be a longish par four, but it's also going to be uphill. So I think the uphill nature of the approach defines that one. With my dog legs, I'm also going to want to figure how can I make it so that the play isn't always to cut the inside of the dog leg as much as possible. If you're on a dog leg, can we make you play to the outside? So I might try to play. I think the plan for four is have a central bunker at the moment, but I like the idea of an uphill tee shot to a green there. Five. We've got another dog leg going this way. I think I changed this one. I did from my plan because I decided that I was having a dog leg left followed by a dog leg left and I wanted to split it. Now I could go more this way though. Maybe we do. Maybe it just depends on how we do the fairway. Because I think my the reason I might change that is more because I don't want you playing on 12 up here. I've got to defend against that pretty carefully because that could generate a really good angle into that green. So that's one I've got to be aware of. When you've got two holes running in parallel but kind of converging on each other, that's something you ought to bear in mind. Um, but I think five, gently uphill, but nothing major. Five will have to be another strategic hole where the land's not doing anything crazy, so we'll put a good hole design there. Six is, my intention is an uphill par three, which is currently at four feet downhill. So I'm going to have to work on that green site. Let's do that now. I did want this one banked into a hillside if I could possibly could. And could probably lower this a little. Because I don't think I'm gonna have any other uphill par three, so that works. Seven's this drivable par four, that's gonna be both strategic and yeah, that just should be a lot of fun. Like you can potentially roll it on. I actually wanted to make this kind of come out a bit wider. And the idea is going to be that you have this just huge amount of bunkers to carry on the inside line. Uh, eight, I already know, is going to be... That's the one I haven't got an idea for. The land's not giving me as much as I would have wanted. Maybe a fall off over here, but then rising back up again. This one's going to need some work. Nine, I think will need to be a strategic hole. Because the land... You've got a gentle up, uphill approach. There's a coolish green site there. Yeah, we'll see how that one develops. 10 is really strategic and it's pretty much dead flat. I've got a really good idea for 10 which is kind of reliant on the ball funneling down this way which the sculpting works so that fits nicely. Again looking at our dog legs, we've got a short dog leg left, slight right, slight right, that's okay, tight left, good. We're mixing them up and with it's just one more thing to factor in. It's fine to have two dogleg lefts in a row if they're playing completely different distances. You just want to be wary of overdoing it. Short par 3, that would be great. Love a short par 3, it will work really well. 12, I'm going to have to make you try to play over here a bit more or just really make this side unplayable. We'll have some trees in between here. And then the key feature for this one I think will be that uphill approach shot into a green that I can kind of see angled this way. So you're hitting more across it. I think that could be fun. 13 playing down that ridge line. We're going to have out of bounds or something down this left right hand side. That's going to really punish you if you go right and miss. But that being the ideal line. 14 we've talked about a lot already. 15 I've worked in that camber and that's going to be a key feature of a short par 4. 16 I've talked about that idea that you could maybe hit a drive and run through. So it's got an interesting spin on the same sort of shot of can you cut the corner but if you don't quite get it right you're running through into heavy rough and maybe we have the green like that sort of a direction so that if you're here you're hitting from heavy rough into a green with like maybe bunkers this side or something I don't know, could work well 
17 I have this idea that you play uphill and then you have a sort of split fairway and a load of bunkers on this side and wrapping round that could that could work really nicely I think my idea is that you're going to have this cavernous bunker so like Royal Melbourne 10 style or like Peninsula Kingswood 17 like huge bunker here that you have to carry and then you get loads of bunker strings up here it's just going to be not necessarily difficult but it'll be visually intimidating 18 I originally had as a straight hole but that's not going to allow me to generate the look that I really want coming down 18 plus straight holes on a sand belt course don't happen all that often so whereas if I play a dog leg I can make you work angles a little bit more and it's going to open up that sight line um, 18 we're going to crutch on that view quite a lot and a long approach should be a lot of fun there's also this little valley in front that I'm sure we can use that's really the end of this tutorial I guess what I'm doing with this is trying to ensure does the land match my vision do I feel that there are holes that are going to need more work am I seeing anything that's coming up well this will be more when I delve into the routing and do more do I see anything coming up that I think is a really good opportunity that can't be missed like is it worth adapting that plan so I hope that again I really hope this has been helpful we haven't started doing any designing really yet but what I do think we've done is we've spent a lot of time thinking about it and really setting ourselves up for success. So yeah, I do hope this has helped. Um, ask if you've got any questions about anything that you've seen or anything that you find particularly interesting or different. I'd love, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know. Um, and yeah, good luck with your own designs. Episode 3, hopefully, we'll start looking at building a first hole. Or what I might do is build out a prototype and then come back with like early thoughts um, because I will tend to spend a lot of time thinking about this and not actually doing that much. Um, embryonic stages for me take a while. When I get when I hit the groove it goes pretty quickly though. So till next time. See you then.